What up, folks? What it do? Welcome to another episode of the best advice ever podcast with your boy. Yeah, comedian Mike Goodwin. So excited to be back on the saddle again. I've been watching a lot of Yellowstone, so I may make a lot of ranch and farm references unbeknownst to me because it's in my DNA. I'm the type, I'm the type of person when I start watching a show, I get into it, man. It, it really brings me in. It draws me in. So that goes the first. So, but yeah, I'm enjoying this, this Yellowstone. Well, enjoying it is, is, is an interesting word. It's a great show. And I understand now watching shows that there always has to be a problem. There always has to be something in the show that causes tension. I'm the type of person that want to watch the show. And I want all the things to be resolved. I want the people to fall in love. I want them to find the criminal. I want the money to be returned. So those are very boring shows. You need twists and turns and tension. Things cannot go well for shows to be interesting, which is why I haven't written a script because it would be probably the most vanilla script. I'm talking about like McDonald's soft cone because I want things to go well. I want I want a little bit of tension, I want a little bit of drama, but at the end of the end of the show, I I, I grew up in the 80s and the 90s. By the end of every, every episode, we had solved all the problems. We had done all the things, not in this new age, especially drama. Drama, they keep that they keep that tension like a vice grip, man. They let a little bit of it off, but then they ratchet it back up. Yellowstone it's what your boy is watching. I watch a few things. And I've been on the road. That's what I do. Stand-up comedy, keynote speaker. So there's no telling where I'm going to be located. But this last week, this past week, I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yes, indeed. Home of LSU, Louisiana State. University. I was at a church called the, the Healing Place. This is my second time there. I was there a year ago, and I typically don't do return engagements within a year. I'm not that guy. I'm always like, "Hey, how uh, y'all bring me back in a couple of years? At least two years." That back to back. I don't. I don't like that. I don't like that. But but I went back. Went back, and it was for a marriage conference. Outstanding time. It's always great. Very hospitable church. The pastor had some sinus issues. He wasn't there, but his beautiful wife was there. The leadership team is incredible. Had a wonderful, wonderful time. Now, a year ago, I did a set at their marriage conference. It was on a Saturday morning. So this time, I returned for the after party. It was Friday night. Did another set. So I, I didn't do any of the material that I did a year ago. And I think I did about 45 minutes. So that was interesting. And it, and it, and it also has given me the understanding that I have a lot more material than I give myself credit for. I probably have two hours worth of material. I'm always pushing to get more, but it was, it was a good night. We had a great night. One thing that I, I recognized, cause I've been doing quite a few of these marriage conference date nights. Sometimes the event, they'll have an icebreaker. I don't know if you've seen this icebreaker, but typically they'll have two couples on stage and they would blindfold the couples. And then one couple would have to, taste something that's in a plate and describe it to the other one. And the other person would have to get that 
correct answer to get a point. We, as the audience members, know what the item is because it's on the screen. Because they're blindfolded, they don't know. And then it's it's, a, it's interesting to, to try to evaluate the palates of individuals. This this group, I there were two couples, and they may have been up there for two minutes. I, I can't remember, but it was it was a long enough time for them to get more than two. They both got two correct. I think one of the couples may have gotten one correct right at the. Right at the buzzer. I thought they were going to go into taste overtime, but they did not. They were tasting things like uh, tartar sauce, um, cauliflower, Twinkies, Nutella. What's wild, I, I haven't had Nutella enough to communicate what it is. And I don't know if I would be able to tell my wife what Nutella is because a confession, we don't have Nutella at the house and we don't eat that much of Nutella. I, I'm really kind of surprised N N Nutella just kind of showed up out of nowhere for us. And I really, I'm really, my age really shows up when Nutella shows up because I'm like, oh, I don't really, I don't really get down with the Nutella like that. I think, I think it's peanut butter. I know this is blasphemy to some folks, but I was on the road. Interesting enough on being on the road. I am of, I'm almost middle aged, right? I'm almost, I'm, I'm not, I'm closer to 50 than I am 30, right? And when you get to this point in life, you just kind of do the things you've been doing and you may not take advantage of the new technological advances that have taken place. So one of these things that have taken place that I have not been taking advantage of is the whole DoorDash Uber Eats Instacart. Like Uber Eats maybe has been the most reasonable or, or, the, or the app I've been using because I use Uber. But DoorDash, I haven't, no. I had to open a DoorDash account because I, I had some folk I had somebody working over at the office and he was working for someone else and they door dashed him some food. And I was like, Oh, I wonder why they use DoorDash as opposed to Uber eats or I guess there's another one. I can't, I can't remember. But then I realized when I did a little research that DoorDash not only does fast food, but they can also go and get the things that you can get from a grocery store, like what Instacart does. So let me know. Let me know what y'all using out in these streets. I, from my limited amount of research, it seems like DoorDash is the less expensive out of the group. I don't know in terms of which one's faster, which one's less likely for somebody to be eating your fries. I, I don't know all this information, but for you experts out there, I would love to hear. Send me some information in my DMs on Instagram or email us at info at comedianmikegoodwin.com about rank them. Rank who's number one, number two, number three as it relates to DoorDash, Instacart, Uber Eats, whoever else. I'm, I'm forgetting somebody. I'm forgetting. I know I'm forgetting somebody because I don't use them. I get in my car and I go get food. So I would love to hear your rankings as it relates to helping me on the road. Cause again, I've realized with these, these apps, I don't have to leave the hotel. I was talking to somebody recently. They like, they don't even go and buy, they don't go to the grocery store. They just Instacart. It. And I, I worked at a grocery store. That was my first official government job. That was when I had some jobs where people were not taking taxes from me, but, like work for my uncle, I was doing some some uh, lawn care or or uh, <laughs> janitorial service. I had some entrepreneurial uncles. I had an uncle who has a, a detail shop that I spent. I spent probably about four weeks with him, maybe a little less than that. I I couldn't hack it. I got out of there. I couldn't take it. My uncle Bubba, he and he was interesting enough about this experience. My uncle Bubba is a pastor preacher. 
my entire life, does not use profanity. But the way that he would talk to me, I wish he was cussing at me. It's one thing for somebody to cuss you out. It's another thing for them to not use language and still feel like they are cussing you out. That's how my Uncle Bubba talked to me. I used to be cleaning those cars. Come on, come here, let me. I tell him I was finished. Oh, don't tell him that. You, you should just clean until he tells you to stop cleaning. Because I say, hey, I'm finished. You're like, you sure about that? When somebody asks you if you're sure about that, you, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. So we go and take a look at that. He's like, what, what is this? Do you, you don't see the, you don't see the, is something wrong with your eyes? Or are you just dumb? Are you just stupid? Now, I don't know if he said that, but that's how, what I felt like he said. Preacher, man of God, no cuss words. And I still felt like the bottom of a boot with chewing gum on it. Oh, man, that man would ream me out. And it wasn't yelling. It, I'm telling you, it was the most deflating. I said, man, get me out of here, man. I can't. I'm not built for this. Then I, I didn't even know how much money I was making. I didn't. I don't know if it, I didn't even see the money. He might have just gave it to my mom. I, I, maybe it would have felt a little better if he put some money in my pocket. I don't know how much money I made. <laughs> I was just manual labor. I'm gonna do the same thing to my son. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send him somewhere. I told some some of the, my buddies that do variety of work. Like, hey, y'all gonna get some extra hands. You know, you have to train them and tell them what to do. And he come in with you. So yeah, we'd love to hear your rankings as it relates to Instacart, Uber Eats, DoorDash. Hey. Now for the part of the podcast we've all been waiting for. It's the best advice ever. This is what I share. Some information. That I would deem to be the best advice ever. I think in life, you are far better served if you are receiving wisdom and knowledge from someone that's worthy of giving wisdom and knowledge. There's some people out here that love to give advice. That's why I have an issue with social media a little bit. I don't have a problem with people's advice per se. This is Super Bowl week. The Super Bowl just happened. And online, I watched the game and I watched the halftime show. I watched the commercials. Folks were so critical. They were like, the commercials were meh. Halftime show was uh, The game kind of anticlimactic. And I just... I enjoyed it. It was a good game. There were some commercials I liked more than others. And the performance was, it was okay. Uh, it was a little awkward. I was watching it with my family. So I have a 12-year-old and a 16-year-old. So there was a few moments where I felt a little little, little warm around my neck. I felt a little persp per perspiration start to uh, happen on my on my forehead. I felt like, hey, man, they shouldn't do that that thrust so hard right there. That, that, bring that thrust. Make it look more dancing than something else. Suggestive. <laughs> right. But overall, I thought it was fine. Like, I, I cannot imagine being asked to perform at the Super Bowl. I just, wow. Such an honor. To have your name on the list of folks that they would approach so i'm not super critical it's not a concert it's very awkward of a, of a thing to do that like when did that's maybe something to take a look at when did super bowl start using music guests at the halftime it just it's a lot so i mean the the main event is the game i just you know just get back to the game so i and I'm not a huge Rihanna fan. I'm not a hater. I don't dislike Rihanna. She Rihanna, she out there. I don't really know much about her. I mean, I hear her songs. 
I thought she did fine. I thought it was an interesting concept. I, I was entertained. But then you get online and folks, oh, my wife, Super Bowl, boring per, per, performance, worse. Oh, duh. And I was like, yo, are these people that actually perform in their real life? Or are they just Twitter Simon Cows, Instagram and Facebook Simon Cows? And here's the issue that I was, I was saying about social media. I don't have a problem with other people's opinion. We all have opinions. We've all had opinions. I have no issues with your opinion. If your opinion is different than mine, if your opinion is the same of mine, my issue with this day and age with social media is not with your opinion. It's with the fact that I have to see your opinion. There was a time when if I did not know you, I didn't know your opinion. Now, I could be online looking at an article or looking at a performance of something that I support. I could I could log on to somebody's account or look at somebody's post that I'm a fan of, that I promote, that I'm like, oh, that's my guy. But then here you are in the comments with your opinion. And, and a lot of times, Depending on who posts things, I don't even look at the comments. I got to look at mine because I got to make sure nobody down there spamming y'all and telling y'all to click on this link to introduce you to Phyllis Monroe or whoever these people are. But that's my issue, man. I, I've never had a problem with anybody's opinion. I just don't want to know everybody's opinion. I have no interest in certain people's opinion. And that you could agree with me. Like you could have the same opinion. I, I don't I don't care. So all these folks, man, giving all this opinion. I was just like, yo, man, I enjoy somebody. I talked to a friend today. She was like, how did you like this halftime? I was like, it was cool. Like props to Rihanna, man. Props to Rihanna. Now, again, there's a place to be critiquing things and to. Hey, if you ain't like it, you ain't like it, and that's cool. But all this, all this extra curriculum, I mean, folks that, let me get myself in trouble. So back to the best advice ever. <laughs> so the best advice ever, I've been reading this book called The Philosophy of Money, The Psychology of Money. Very good book. And I've seen a quite a few quotable lines in there, but this one I saw it jumped out on the page and I said, man, that'd be a great piece of advice to use in the best advice ever podcast. So that advice is simply this. It's a quote from the book, the psychology of money. And I'm going to read the, the exact quote, but I'm going to kind of put a little Mike Goodwin spin on it, but it talks about planning and how important planning is. We all know if we're over the age of 30 or 25 or 18 or 12, <laughs> we should realize that it is beneficial to plan, to think about the steps that we're going to take to achieve a goal, right? To plan. So this advice that I'm going to share, we already Let's all agree that planning is important. So here's the advice. The most important part of every plan is to plan on the plan not going according to plan. So let me give it to you again. The advice. This is the best advice ever for the day. Is the most important part of every plan is to plan on the plan not going according to plan. And then so the question that they ask, can your plan survive reality? Hmm, interesting question. So just know that with the greatest of plans, and I don't, I don't even think this is a contingency or a plan B or the plan for the plan. Just understand that when you plan, the most important part of every plan is the plan 
on the plan, not going according to plan. So, for instance, if you think it's going to take five weeks, it might take 10 weeks. If you think the drive is going to be 20 minutes, it might be 25 minutes. So always give yourself some margin. Give yourself some some wiggle room. That's what people people say as it relates to plans. And I'm very dogmatic. I'm very dogmatic as it relates to, I, I'm the king of rules. I'll come up with a set of rules <laughs> in a heartbeat. And then I'll lay those rules out like it's the gospel. And it's not. It's just a plan. It's a outline. It's a guide to where I'm going. Because sometimes the plan can happen faster than what you had planned for it to happen. So maybe sometimes it, it doesn't go according to plan, not the negative side of it, but it may be positive that it may happen a little sooner than you plan. I think about Kim Mulkey at LSU and uh, LSU just played the lady game. I don't know if that's appropriate to say lady. We live in a different time. And I, I, this was a conversation I had with somebody today about some of the biases and prejudices that I have. And that are inside of me just by virtue of the time period I live. A friend of mine just told me I had, I had some fat phobia. I had some fat phobia, basically some feelings or some sentiment as it relates to using the word fat as an insult, as opposed to just using the word. So if I'm saying you're weaponizing it and, they, and she called me out on it and I was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, but I grew up in the time. And so I'm, I'm kind of, one of the things I, I said to her, like, I mean, I get how people that have these archaic thoughts, I see how they got to where they are. And whether that's, <laughs> it's like I, the joke was, <laughs> I was like, man, I can see how racists feel the way they feel, man. Like <laughs> if you grew up in a certain time, hey, man. You have certain feelings and everybody had those feelings. And the majority of people had those feelings. And now the, the, the earth is shifted under your feet. You can't have those feelings anymore. Like I, re, I, I told, I told her this, I said, you know, I'm of the opinion that uh, NASCAR should have gotten rid of the Confederate flags. Yeah. I said it. You know what it is. If you're about to roll up on a NASCAR event, it's going to be some Confederate flags there. Come on, man. Don't leave them people alone. And then, so she made the point of, well, you may be restricting other people from participating. I'm like, that's true. I said, well, let's get them a Confederate flag corner, like smoking, right? Like, <laughs> like in the airport. I don't know if these things exist, but in the airport, you could smoke in the airport and in, the, in that little holding room, and y'all could pass that 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 bronchitis and cancer around to one another in the little in the little holding smoking room but i never walked in the little holding smoking room and told the people y'all be shame yourself what's wrong with you that's how i feel like nascar man if they had a little little confederate flag section they you know they got to make the whole thing you know i, I appreciate people not smoking in restaurants and bowling alleys anymore i mean when i was a kid they smoked everywhere and you just had to not be affected <laughs> Then they started talking about secondhand smoke. Maybe folks were smoking on on flights. Forget at the airport, they were smoking on the planes. But we've evolved, we've grown, we have more information. And so I feel like that now. There's some, there's some, there's some archaic beliefs and thoughts. And I think I guess one of those things is how I'm using fat, weaponizing it and saying it. You know, as a descriptor of uh, uh, to insult or to to demean. Now, I, I don't personally do that, but I, you know, you you have these you have these experiences and thoughts, and so we have to hold ourselves to a higher standard. And and I, and and that's one thing that I'm finding myself, man. 
it's different. Like the you know, we talk about inclusivity, and she was talking about an event, and they, they had a prayer, and the prayer was very respectful. I don't, and it didn't, and it, it didn't name any particular deity, but someone of another of another faith tradition came and said, "Well, they didn't feel inclusive because these people pray." I'm like, "You in South Carolina, cuz come on." read the room plus here's the other thing because i noticed I'm, I'm struggling these are some of the struggles i have is it okay for you to be not a part of the group for six minutes is that fine like do you have to feel inclusive the entire time hey man there's moments in time where you might not feel a part of the group it's all right <laughs> that is barbarian talk right there so y'all pray for my strength in the lord and in, in, in growth. <laughs> but yes, that's the best advice ever. Thank y'all for checking in. Got uh, one of my favorite parts of the podcast, the What You're Not Gonna Do. Sexy. Hey. I just read that uh, Chick-fil-A is bringing out a cauliflower sandwich. They say it is plant forward as opposed to vegetarian because they're using eggs and milk. And I'm like, what you're not going to do is start bringing all of these vegetable meats inside of these restaurants. This is not real meat. It's vegetable meat. Now, the thing I did find to be quite interesting is they started developing the cauliflower sandwich in 2018. Wow. So they went through a number of focus groups, research, testing, and you want your idea to be on the shelves tomorrow. Come on, people. Plan for your plan to not work the way that the plan was going according to plan. I messed that up. So what you're not going to do is think that the world's not changing. It's changing. There are chicken places serving cauliflower sandwiches. This is where we live. And also what you're not going to do is not remember it's Valentine's Day. It's the Valentine's Day. You better have your reservations, get your flowers and your candies. The day is the day. I have a very interesting journey with Valentine's Day. And the day is not the day to have that conversation, but we'll, we'll have it at some point. Now, we do have one person sending a question. So we're going to do the Ask the Bowtie segment of the podcast and the question is hey mike what's the difference between a comedian and a comic are they one in the same or can one be the same as the other or but not the other way around great question that's from a man richard he also had a link in there for a story about Dion sanders for the church of Dion sanders i looked at it quickly i didn't do any much i didn't do much research on it but basically i think uh, Dion's getting some heat in Colorado. That ain't the South. About uh, player led, player led prayers, and so I think he says he's gonna. I, I didn't again. I don't know. I hadn't done the research, but looking at it and I'm making my quick assessment. I'm like, I bet you he'll end it. He'll probably have players not do the prayer. He'll have staff members do the prayer. That's what I my initial thought when I saw that when I saw that story about. The, Deion Sanders. But back to the question, the difference between a comic and a comedian, I think from what I've seen and from what I kind of think about as it relates to this title, I I, I think most stand-ups use the word comic. That's like a badge of honor. You don't call people that don't do stand-up comics. Everybody else can be a comedian. So you can be an internet comedian. If you do improv comedian, you can be a comedic actor and be a comedian but you're not a comic a comic is a stand-up now i interchange when i'm talking about comedians i use comic and comedian because i'm talking specifically about about comedians but if i'm talking about a comedic actor i'll probably say the actor or a comedic actor if i'm talking about a i don't necessarily use the word internet comic or skits I would just probably use the person's name and I'll say, yeah, that, that person's a, a internet comedian and not to show, throw shade, but I think the difference is comics 
that's the respected terminal. Like those are the people that are standing on stage with a microphone delivering jokes. Also remember hearing once that there was a definition of uh, comedians say funny things, but comics make things funny. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank y'all again for tuning in to another episode of the best advice ever podcast. Please send your questions to info at comedian, Mike Goodwin.com. Uh, also share like forward this to folks. Think about people that could benefit from enjoying this podcast, truck drivers, people that have commutes, folks that want to listen to a podcast while cleaning up the house. I'm your guy. I'm your boy. So I would love for you to let folks know about what we got going on over here. And again, thank you for checking in, following me. I hadn't had this jacket on and this bow tie. This this is this is bow tie. This is one of my first bow ties. This these these go back. So I had to break these out. And uh still got some life in them. So you might see this a little bit more often. But thank y'all so much for checking in on the best podcast, the best advice ever podcast. It's your boy, Mike Goodwin. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace.